It's Facebook Live time with By Annie. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're excited to be back in a new month. I cannot believe it's February already. Wow, January flew by. I don't think I've ever had a month go as fast as that one did. So we're going to just visit here for a minute while we wait to see if some people are joining us. I don't see anybody on yet, so comment and let us know where you're joining us from. Give us a few thumbs up and stars. Let us know you're there. Oh, okay. Kathy is here from Chile, Cleveland. And Inga from Denmark. Thank you, Inga, for joining us. And Janice from Houston. Oh, lots of people coming on. Barbara's here. Um, Susan says hello. I'm not sure where Susan's from. That's a little bit far for me to read, but I can almost read them. So thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. We're really happy. Oh my goodness, there's a whole bunch more. Someone from the UK. Let's see, that's Tina. Thank you, Tina. Wonderful to have you here. Someone from Florida, Chile, Florida, uh, Jean says. So it's cold in Florida too. I heard or read on the news this morning that every state in the U.S. is going to be below freezing this coming week. We're actually pretty warm here. I think our temperature's in the 60s, and I heard we're only a couple hours from Vegas, and they're supposed to be up to 70 today. So um, it's pretty nice during the day, although it's getting pretty cool at night. Um, I've definitely wanted to wear a jacket when I go home after dark. So um, yeah, winter, winter is still here. Lots of snow everywhere. We had snow actually that fell on the ground last week for a few days, and all the mountains around St. George have beautiful white on them. So my grandson and his mom and dad went uh, sledding on Sunday and had a great time. All right, it looks like we've got lots of people joining us. I think we should get started. We have a whole lot to talk about today. Uh, so thank you for joining us and, and keep letting us know where you're from. And if you have any questions, be sure to post those. We've got people watching the questions and ready to answer them. And we want to help you um, get answers to anything that you need to know. So there were a few questions from last time that weren't answered that I want to cover and also some comments. So lots of people commented last week when we talked about mesh and fold over elastic that they were really happy to learn that mesh stretches, that it has a grain line. It's more stretchy on the crosswise grain than on the lengthwise grain. They really appreciated hearing that fold over elastic relaxes after it comes off the roll and learning how to put zippers in mesh was also really exciting for people to learn. So thank you for letting us know that. And if you missed last week and didn't learn those few things, remember that each presentation each week we will record it and post it on our um, Facebook page and on our YouTube channel. And when we record it, it's usually in better definition than what you're seeing through Facebook. So if there's something you couldn't see very well, you might check that out. The camera angles on a Facebook Live aren't quite as good as when we film our videos. Um, so make sure you check out our video tutorials too um, if you need help with specific uh, techniques, but we're, we'll try to get them as close as we can. Donna also said, I also learned that it's very important to watch the videos before attempting a project. Even though I've been sewing for many years, I learn something new when I watch the videos and it makes the project so much easier to accomplish. This is one of the reasons when we write patterns and when we film videos, we always say, read the whole pattern and watch all the videos before you start. Because sometimes there's something that that when you see how it's done, it may make a difference in how you cut your pieces, or you may understand why you're doing it in a certain order. The other, um, I totally lost my train of thought there, something that had to do with what, what that was, but if I think of it later, I'll say it. Another question was, can you wash projects made with soft and stable? Absolutely. Soft and stable is 100% washer and dryer safe. You can throw a piece of soft and stable in the washer and it comes out just like it went in. It doesn't fall apart like batting does. So it washes and dries beautifully. Normally, if I'm washing one of my bags like this, I will throw it in the washer. I don't always put it in the dryer because I don't like to hear the... Um, 
the hardware banging around in there, so a lot of times I let it air dry, but if it's small projects or placemats or things like that, they go in the washer and dryer and they come out beautifully. Another question that wasn't asked but that kind of ties in with that is people say, do you pre-wash your fabrics? And no, we don't. Usually we get fabrics in and immediately send them off to the quilter to start um, you know, getting them ready to sew. And we like leaving the sizing on that comes with the fabric, so we don't wash it until we've used it for a while. But the soft and stable is so strong and sturdy that it combats any minimal shrinkage that you might have with fabric. So we've never had any problems with, you know, things not holding their shape and looking really nice after that. So if you want to save a step, you know, if you had a fabric, we use really high quality quilting fabrics that I think, you know, don't, we don't have to worry about colors running. If you were using a fabric that you might worry about colors running, you may want to pre-wash it. But other than that, I don't really see a need for pre-washing fabrics. Another question was, what needle do you use to sew, mesh, and fold over, and what stitch length? We use a 9014 top stitch needle for pretty much everything we sew. I don't do a lot of quilting, so I don't do piecing where I might want a smaller needle. Most of our sewing is done on soft and, with things that have soft and stable or single layers of fabric when we're preparing binding, and that 9014 top stitch needle works wonderfully. The thing about a top stitch needle compared to a regular needle is that it has a really strong shank, it has a groove down the shank that your thread rests in, and it has an eye that's twice as big as the eye on a regular needle. There's two things I love about that. First, it's way easier to thread it because I can actually see it. Secondly, your thread um, has room to move in there so your thread doesn't shred. So having the groove down the shank to keep your thread kind of pushed back into the needle as it goes in and out of the fabric and the extra big eye really makes a difference in having success with your sewing. So we use that needle and and we use Sew Fine number 50 thread for almost everything we do. It's a 50 weight polyester thread and those are what we use whether we're sewing mesh, fold over, um, zippers, vinyl, quilted fabric, any of those things. And we normally use a 2.5 stitch length. I try to remember to raise it to three when I'm doing quilting, but I rarely remember that because I don't do quilting very often. So I would say the vast majority of time I'm using a two and a half with that 9014 top stitch needle. Another question is, why do you use a zipper longer than the pocket and let it hang off on each end? That's a really good question, and I should have had a zipper here. Glow, would you go grab a double slide zipper for me, any size? Or grab my zipper step out that's sitting upstairs? We'll come back to that in a minute. Several people also said they liked knowing the name of the fabric that was used and the designer, and I'll try really hard to remember to tell you that each time if I know it. But an important thing to know is if you join our email, you'll get details about those things for what we're showing, but you also can find that information on our website anytime. So if you go up to the top bar, menu bar, you're going to see a link that says photo gallery. And if you click on that and scroll down to the very bottom, you're going to see another link that says buy any models. And when you click on that, it's going to bring up an Airtable document that shows all the models that we've made. And they're listed in chronological order. So some of, so you're gonna see what we just finished making if it's been photographed. They're not gonna show up if we don't have photographs yet. So some of them may not be edited yet. So you may see backgrounds and you know what they look like when we took them. But, Trevor takes the pictures, Brooke edits them, and sometimes it takes a little while to get that done. So you'll see those in there, and you're going to see all the models. One really important thing to know is that you can sort them. So if you want to, for instance, see all the models that we made using Tula Pink fabrics, you can filter by designer Tula Pink, and it will bring you up everything that we've ever made using Tula's fabrics unless it's been retired. 
So it's a really great way to get some inspiration. If you have a particular fabric and you're just stumped about what to use it for, you know, you can go look and see the things that we made with it. Or if you want to make a get out of town bag and you're not sure what kind of fabric you want to use, go filter by get out of town and you'll see all of the um, models that we made of get out of town. And so you can see lots of different fabrics. So back to why do we let a zipper hang out on each end? So the important thing, I'm going to lay this down here and hopefully you can see this okay on here. So can you see where these zipper slides are? Would it be better if I held it up, Jake? How the zipper tape bulges out where the zipper slides are? As soon as I move these zipper slides down, can you see how that zipper tape straightened out? That's why we always wanna let our zipper slides hang off on the end so that whatever zipper tape we're attaching to our project is nice and straight. We're not trying to deal with this bulge right here because there's no way you can sew a nice straight seam if you've got that bulge. So if you can let your zipper slide hang off the end and attach your zipper, then when you go to put it in your project, you can sew across this edge and then move the slide into place, but it's already sewn with a nice straight seam. So that's why we always let our zippers hang out on the ends. It also, if you've got a zipper that has a metal stop on one end, it lets you avoid that and not worry about hitting it with your needle. So um, lots and lots of benefits to having a zipper longer than you need. All right, several other people mentioned that my visits to their store were canceled in 2020. And that was really a bummer. I had some really fun trips planned for 2020. I was really surprised when I went to fill in my calendar for 2021 that I had blocked out the whole month of July to go to Australia, which obviously isn't going to happen. So I'm home, you know, for the time being and um, hoping to get a, a vaccine here one day soon and hoping the rest of the world gets vaccines and we can get back to normal. But the silver lining in the cloud is I'm here to do these weekly Facebook Lives and we've had a whole lot of fun doing them. And so thank you for joining us and thank you for supporting us in this. Back to talking about the models and being able to see the pictures on the website. If you, um, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words, but sometimes you wanna touch it and feel it and see, you know, what do the pockets on the inside look like. Make sure that you talk to your quilt shop and let them know that you'd love to have a Biani um, trunk show come to your store. We have hundreds and hundreds of models. And I always say I would rather they were out working than hanging out in the closet like lazy teenagers. So ask them to contact us. If they go to our website and click on the classes and events link that's at the top and scroll down, there'll be a link that says trunk shows and they can go straight there and it will give them the ability to say, I would like to have a trunk show on such and such dates. We get it and then we say, go pick the models and they go to that same gallery that we told you about. They pick whichever models they want and then we either confirm or if those aren't available, we offer them some different ones and we get it set up. So if you're a shop owner, know that this is a really great way to get models in your store. Models really help sell patterns and you don't have to do all the sewing. So again, if you've got a new line of fabric coming in and you want to borrow models made with that, it's a great way to showcase that fabric and get it moving out of the store right away. So, that kind of gets us through the questions that came in from last time. Thank you all so much for um, participating and letting us know um, what you're thinking and, and what you appreciate about these Facebook Lives. Today, we're going to do a little mini trunk show. We recently renamed some patterns and we're gonna talk about those and why that came about and show you a few, we had actually 11 patterns that we renamed and we're going to um, talk about that. So in order to do that, I thought maybe we would start with a little Biani history lesson, a little mini history lesson. My staff's telling me I need water. Okay, 
So I have been writing patterns for 21 years now. I guess I'm officially an, a pattern writing adult. So I wrote my first pattern in 2000. And I started writing patterns as a way to pay for my quilting habit. My kids were gone. Um, they'd, let's see, my, my daughter had graduated and gone off to college. My son might have still been in college or in high school, but he was grown up and he didn't need mom, you know, running him around town. He had his driver's license so he could get around. And I had gotten really involved in our local quilt guild. And I really wanted a way to help support my quilting habit. You know, it's not that my husband wouldn't let me have whatever money I wanted, but there was something about earning it myself that I felt like if I wanted to go buy a yard of fabric, I didn't have to account for it as part of the family budget. So I decided that if I would write some patterns, that would be a good way to get some a little bit of extra income coming in. So I took a class at the college. I learned how to... Um, code in HTML. I set up my first website. And when I started, I had three patterns, um, hanging organizer, Annie's favorite purses, and accessories, I think were the three patterns that I had at that time, all of which we still sell. And um, so I started that. And I cannot tell you what a thrill it was to go to the mailbox and have a $10 check or, you know, go to my website and have somebody who paid on PayPal with a $10, you know, bought a $10 pattern. And so, you know, every $10 that came in, I could go buy another yard of fabric. And it was just great fun. And, and that was how I got started. Within a few years, I um, had teamed up with Superior Threads and I was doing shows with them and teaching um, Superior University with them. And my business started growing little by little. Uh, they came out with a product called Texture Magic, which was a product that sh makes your, um, you sew it to your fabric and you steam it and it shrinks and produces texture. And that took my business from a hobby to a business because when that came out, all the distributors started picking up my patterns and they, um, you know, wanted patterns that use this product. And so things started to grow. I hired my first employee in 2010, and at the time I was, when I started, I was working basically at my desk, and I had a closet that I kept patterns in. By the time I hired my first employee, it was when we I started adding zippers to my product line, and I needed someone to help assemble them, and so I needed a little more space. So I took over my three-car garage. In 2013, my husband died, and the next year, my son and his wife came to work with me. They moved from California to Utah and came on full time. And when they came, I said, my goal is that I can turn all the day-to-day -day stuff over to you. So all I have to worry about is writing patterns, filming videos, and teaching classes. And it took us about three years to get to that point because I had a really hard time giving up control. When you've done it all yourself for so long, in many ways, it's like, it's just easier to do it myself than to show somebody else how to do it. But also it was like, yeah, well, are you sure you can do that? Are you sure you know what you're doing? So within about three years, I, it was like, once they took away some of the things, it's like, I never want to do that again. So thank goodness they came and thank goodness they took it over because now in 2021, you know, writing patterns, filming videos, and teaching classes is more than a full-time job. And so there's no way I could have done all that other stuff. So we went from my three-car garage. Within a year after Casey and Glow came to work, we moved into a 2,800-square-foot warehouse, which was full the day we moved in because I had stuff you know, all over my house. Um, within a year or so, we had moved into about a 5,000 square foot warehouse. And last April, we doubled our space here. So we've got a lot more space, which is rapidly also filling up. So lots of changes in that time, um, but a lot of fun too. And so all of that little history is kind of a story about why we renamed our patterns. So when I started again, I was doing this as a way to pay for my quilting habit. And, you know, I'd come up with a pattern name and I'd put it out and it didn't matter what it was because it was just me. You know, nobody else had to know. Well, when Casey and Glow came to work and started taking things over, we started becoming a little more professional. 
And over years, if I made changes to a pattern, but it was essentially the same pattern, I would write the new pattern and I would call it um, 2.0 which worked, you know, it was the same pattern but with a few changes. Well, then we hired a graphic designer to help us lay out our patterns and we completely changed our layout. We changed our um, style of writing. We, Im we improved a lot of stuff. We got better illustrations, all these things. And so now we also were rewriting a lot of our old patterns and calling them 2.0s, but it was confusing. So we'd come out with a catalog or we'd put them on the website and people would say, what's, what's a 2.0? And we tried to say, well, a 2.0 is one that has a video, but it didn't, they didn't all have videos. The newer ones, we're making sure that every pattern we do has a video, but not all the older ones did. So for instance, Airshow, which I originally wrote as a quilt with small six inch blocks and then decided to make it with larger blocks so it would be quicker to do, became Airshow 2.0, but it didn't have an add-on video. So people kept having trouble, our staff kept having trouble trying to explain how to do it. So we finally decided we've got to fix this. And so there were 11 patterns that were called 2.0s that didn't have actual videos with them. So we took those 11 patterns and instead of calling them 2.0 at the end, we renamed them with the Roman numeral 2 at the end. So this used to be Airshow 2.0. It's now Airshow 2 with the Roman numeral 2. So we've got 11 patterns that are now 2s rather than 2.0s, and those are what I'm going to show you today. So basically we redid the covers. We, we, the front covers didn't change much other than we made the font and the style the same as all of our other patterns. The back covers we tried to update to our current style so that it lists the size. Some of our older patterns when I started didn't tell you the size of the finished project. They include our current numbers for our hardware SKUs, our current style of calling for zippers. So we updated all that. And then the inside of the pattern, we thought, well, all we really have to do is change the cover. But then we realized, well, you can't have a name 2.0 on this inside and Roman numeral two on the outside. So we went in and had to make changes to the inside too which meant if it had labels, the name had to change on the labels. And you know, if it had the name on it, so lots of changes. It, it, I thought it would be a quick and easy project. It ended up taking me the better part of two weeks to get those finished and ready to go. But we threw away all the old ones, we've got the new ones in. And so if you're a store, the SKU number is the same, the pattern is basically the same, it's just that the name has changed and um, those are ready to go. So if you're a customer and you have some of those old patterns, don't feel like you have to go buy the 2.0. There's There might be a few changes in format because the other thing I ran into is when I wrote those, I was working in Publisher and of course computer programs update. And so when I'd go to open the file, because of the updates, everything was messed up. The illustrations weren't in the right pages. So it just became a big job to try and get things fixed, but hopefully we've got them all fixed. So we're going to talk about these patterns. They may not be ones you've seen. Again, there are some of our older patterns. Some aren't so old, but all favorite ones of mine, and so I wanted to tell you about them. So the first one I wanted to show you is Airshow 2. And this is a pattern that I designed when my son Casey was in high school. His um, mascot for his school. They were called the Dixie Flyers and their mascot was a biplane. So I designed a quilt that had airplanes all over it and did it in the school colors and that was the original air show pattern. I was teaching classes a lot at our local quilt shop, Quilt It Works at the time, and Sharla, who's one of the owners, said I'd really like to make that quilt for my husband who flies, but I don't want to make those blocks that small. I'm going to try enlarging them. So she enlarged them. It took a whole lot less blocks, a whole lot less work, and it turned out so wonderfully that we did the new new pattern to do that. So these, I think, are 10-inch finished size blocks, and there's two different styles of plane. So there's one where the plane is set on the diagonal, 
and then there's one where the plane goes straight up and down. And you can mix and match them however you want. It's really fun to do them. There's two borders on the quilt, so it turns out being a really nice size for a, you know, a throw, um, not quite a, a twin size quilt size, but a really nice generous throw size. We made this one using a fabric called Luminous by Anna Maria Horner. Um, again, this was made probably 10 years ago at least, so I doubt that that fabric's available still, but it's a really nice yarn dyed um, woven fabric and absolutely beautiful. So um, fun to do with bright colors. The first ones I did, I did with primary colors and, and those turned out really well too. One thing that I wanted to show you on here, when I had this quilted, I my husband was a pilot and he um, flew a Cessna 170B um, tail dragger and the call letters on our plane were 2402 Delta. So I had her quilt the call letters of the plane on on one of the wings of the airplane just as a special memory of him. So if you're making this for someone who flies, keep that in mind. That might be something that you could embroider on there or, or quilt when you go to do the quilting. So our favorite quilter, Linda Brown, quilted this and you can see she just did kind of an all over design in the sky and then fun designs in the borders. But this is a very fun quilt to make and um, if it's done using paper foundation piecing. If paper foundation piecing is new to you, go to Biani.com, click on the tutorials, and you'll find a tutorial for paper piecing that includes instructions for that quilt. And we've got a really easy method that involves folding the paper pattern before you start, and then cutting using an add a quarter ruler that makes paper piecing so simple and easy and fun. So check that out if you need some help. The next pattern that I wanna talk about is Totally Trendy Totes. Again, this was one of my very early patterns. And this pattern makes just a simple, easy tote bag. This is one that we made with K Facets fabric. Um, it's got two borders. So the, the quilted fabric is one piece that comes all the way around. So it's not really an ideal uh, pattern for directional fabrics. But as you can see, not a lot of that quilted fabric shows. You cover the top and the bottom with borders. You put pockets in the middle. Handles cover the edges of those. So, you know, you could probably even make it work with a directional fabric. But it's a simple tote to make. And the pattern includes three sizes. So this is the smallest size bag in the pattern. And when we, and the other two are substantially larger. So the medium is the one that I always took to um, quilt guild with me because I could put all my show and tell, tell stuff in it. The large is so big that I could put a queen size quilt and my big oval quilting hoop in it. So if you're going to make one, if you want a huge tote, check out that. Because the sizes were so big, we didn't want people making that biggest one and thinking, oh, it's a large tote and being disappointed when they saw how big it was. So the pattern starts at medium. So the sizes in the pattern are medium, large, and extra large. So just as a little reference there, uh, pay attention to the sizes before you start. So they just have handles that are attached that you can wear over your shoulder, but a simple, easy pattern to make and fun to do. So that pattern again is called Totally Trendy Totes 2. Yeah, the On the inside? Yeah. So this um, has a little stabilizer sleeve in the bottom that supports it. And then it has, yeah, I forgot to mention this totally. It has a zipper that zips shut so that everything's not falling out. And if you want it to lay flat against the side of your bag, it does. And then we've, we, because we hate a loose lining, that's why this became a 2.0 originally. We got rid of the loose lining and changed it so it was all quilted and figured out a way to bind the edges to finish those seams. And there are no pockets on the inside because we didn't want to have all that bulk when we did that seam on the inside. So rather than pockets on the inside, this pattern includes three different vinyl project bags that go inside that 
that are an older style. If I did them today, I'd make them totally differently. But basically, it's a piece of vinyl with a zipper at the top, and then the sides are bound. And they're sized to fit exactly in each. So I'm, I mostly made this when I was quilting, and I thought all my project pieces could go in there, and I could fit two or three of those in. So I liked that better than interior pockets. So there's a pocket on the back, a pocket on the front, and those are perfect for sticking your phone, your keys, anything that you need to get to rapidly. Is that good? All right. The next one that we updated or renamed is Day Tripper. And this is just a simple bag that we had designed originally to carry like an iPad or we thought made out of the right fabric, this would be a great um, bag for a guy to carry a computer in. The original version of this we made using Pendleton wool and Pendleton sold it in their stores. So the original Day Tripper had a wool bag on the inside and when we decided to update it. We um, designed it for um, using a focal print. This is Ex Libris from Allison Glass for Andover. And so the pattern explained how to center this piece because again, this is one piece that goes all the way around and then you make a little boxed bottom in it. So the pattern describes how to do that. So that the Day Tripper 2 um, will give those instructions. There's a pocket on the back with a zipper at the top so you can put, you know, things that you want to keep safe in there. Again, a very similar um, zipper opening at the top. It opens to lay flat. And then there's just a slip pocket on the inside. This bag actually has a loose lining because we made this one so there's no quilting. So if, if quilting isn't your style, this pattern is completely written with instructions for making a bag without quilting. And it's got an adjustable handle that has a slider on it so you can carry it cross body. Um, it connects with rectangle rings to tabs that are sewn on each side. So it's not a removable strap, but an easy bag to make. And this one is always a really popular one. So that's Day Tripper. The next pattern that got renamed is our On the Town bag, which again was one that I made when I was using a lot of um, Texture Magic. This is the one that I always like to use at shows to demonstrate um, Soft and Stable. And if you missed our episode on Soft and Stable a couple weeks ago, make sure you go back and watch that because we went into a lot of information about why you want to use Soft and Stable and how you actually assemble this bag. So lots of good information there. But just as, a, as an example, this is the bag that I made out of batting. And when I let go of the handles, the whole bag collapses, whereas the one that I made out of soft and stable stands up and holds its shape. So this is on the town too. Again, no quilting. It does have a loose lining in it. It has pockets on the inside. Um, Front and back, you divide those however you want. I think I divided mine into thirds uh, or dub two each, but simple, easy bag to make. And the pattern includes instructions for either doing wooden handles like this or fabric handles. And one question I know you're going to ask is, where do you get the handles? Um, these handles, the pattern will tell you how far apart they need to be. You could go a little bit further apart if you found some. You wouldn't want them too close or they'd be um, on top of this. We used to carry these on our website, but the company that we bought them from started selling to Joann's, and so they wouldn't sell to us anymore. So we no longer carry the handles, but you could probably find them at your Joann's store or check with your local quilt shop and see if they have something. Um, it doesn't have to be this exact handle, but you'll probably find something that will work really well. So that pattern again is on the town too. The next one is not a bag. We've talked about a lot of bags, but this is a pattern that is really near and dear to my heart and one that I really used a lot when I um, was quilting and um, doing applique and doing a lot of hand stitching. So this pattern is called Thread Dispenser, and there are two sizes. So there's the big one, and then there's a small one, and the small one has two different options. So you can either make it so that it just folds in half and is flat, 
or you can make it with a little bit wider bottom so that when, and I've got that one stuck on so you can't see that one folded up, but when that folds up, it's got a little base so it would stand up. The large one has one, two, three, four, five pockets, four that are short, one that's bigger. These are great for putting your thread in, um, your rotary cutter, your supplies, and when you're, when you're ready to go, it folds up. I've got those things clipped on there so it may not fold up quite right, but there's a little elastic loop that hooks over the button and it's nice and compact and easy to stick in your bag and you've got all your pieces handy. So each of these bags will hold up to 12 small spools of thread like this. You can put six in the small one, so you could put 12 in here. If I'm on a plane trip and I'm doing handwork, I love taking this small one because I can put my thread in one side, my thimble, my scissors, all those things in the other, and everything is nice and compact and I'm not worrying about losing stuff. The beauty of this pattern is that each of these pockets has a strip of ultra suede that is attached between the vinyl and the zipper. And that strip of ultra suede enables you to thread a needle with your spool of thread, bring the needle up through the, that strip of ultra suede, and then you can thread your needle without having to take your spool out of the pocket. And the, th the ultra suede keeps it from pulling in and out and holds it kind of in place. So I, I love that feature because especially if I was on a plane, I didn't worry about my spool of thread rolling down the aisle and trying to figure out where it want, went. So you can get up to 48 spools of thread in here, plus your other supplies, and it's just a great use for that. So that, again, is called Thread Dispenser 2. All right, let's talk next about this bag and its big sister, which is Travel Duffel. So these, um, these are two patterns that have been updated into our newer format. So um, our graphic designer, Lindsay, has laid them out. She's done illustrations for them. The only reason that we can't call them 2.0s is we did not film videos for them. So these patterns were released as 2.0 versions when we first started doing add-on videos. And we had so many on our plate that we knew we couldn't get them all done. So we said, well, let's just concentrate on the new patterns and we'll go back someday and do them for the 2.0s. And that day hasn't come yet, but hopefully someday it will. Um, if this is a pattern that you've made and struggled with, let us know if you think we really need a video for it and what you think should be included. So these, pa these bags, I'm going to show you the smaller one because it's a little easier to pick up. These patterns are different from our other travel bags in that this is one piece of fabric that wraps around. So you have one piece that comes all the way around and makes the front, the bottom, the back, and the top. And a zipper is sewn in between. And then you sew the ends on. And those each have pockets on them. There's, on the small, there's a pocket in the center on the front, or on the back, and then in the front, there's a combination pocket. So you have a slip pocket here, and then a zippered pocket in back. It has handles that you can throw over your shoulder. It also includes an adjustable detachable carrying strap. So if you wanna wear it crossbody or carry it a different way, you can. The inside of this bag has a mesh pocket on one side that is a slip pocket and a slip fabric pocket on the other side. And I'm pretty sure the pattern gives you the option of doing all fabric or all mesh, but even if it doesn't, you could figure that out yourself. So we didn't do a zippered pocket in here because there was no real way to sew it in. So just slip pockets in these. You'll notice that when we talked about soft and stable and we said we do the line of stitching across here to encourage it to fold, there's a line of stitching there, a line of stitching there, whose only purpose is to get the bag to fold nice and crisply on those lines. So these are super easy bags to make. Uh, the only challenging part is doing that binding on the end. And we, 
These are probably the only patterns that I can think of right off the top of my head that suggest that you cut your binding two and a half instead of two and a quarter because you've got a little bit of bulk when you get down to these bases and it's a little bit easier to do with a wider binding. But fun to make, not great for directional fabrics because one side might be upside down, but if you really want to use a directional fabric, make sure you go to our tutorials and watch our video that talks about dealing with directional fabrics. We've come up with a fabulous way to join fabrics um, so that it's going to be upright on both sides and you'll want to watch that. So that's Get Out of Town 2. And this is its big sister, Travel Duffel 2. This is one of our most popular patterns. People love this one. And to me, this has a little more masculine shape than our ultimate travel. So I think this is a great one for guys. Would be great for travel, great for a gym bag, um, or, you know, yourself. So there is to see which is the front. So this is the front on this back. So in the front, there is a slip pocket in the middle, zippered pockets on each side. The raw edges of all those are covered by the handles. And then in the back, there is just the slip pocket in the center and then a trolley sleeve. This is great because it lets you hook this over the handles on your rolling luggage when you travel and it makes it really easy to carry it. So a padded shoulder strap, the handles, and this bag, again, I believe has the same slip pockets on the inside. So I stuck all my empty bags in here today, but there's a slip pocket there and just one on this bag. So we skipped the mesh pocket on this bag. And I'm guessing the reason why is that it's wider. Well, no, our, our, our mesh is 54 inches wide. So I don't know, I'm not sure why we skipped it on here, but you could certainly add it. The same way you add the pocket on the other side, you could add the mesh pocket on that side. So again, Travel Duffel 2 and its little sister, Get Out of Town 2. And these are really fun bags to make. So while we're talking about travel, I want to show you the next one that we uh, renamed. And I brought out two versions of this because I couldn't decide which one, so I thought, well, I'll just show you both. So this pattern is called Jet Set 2, and when I was doing a lot of travel, this was the bag that I took on the plane because I find I sleep like a baby if I have a pillow. And if not, my head's bobbing back and forth and I'm laying on my neighbor pretty quick. So this is something I always take with me when I travel. So I've got my pillow in here, and this was just a nice way to be able to carry that and check everything else. So this one I filled as if I was going on a trip. So pocket in the front for my phone, another pocket here where my earbuds can go in. I'd usually put my boarding pass in there too. And um, then inside I have my pillow, my bottle of water, a zippered mesh pocket, let me open this so you can see it. So there's a zippered mesh pocket that goes all the way across the back and I put my book in there and that's really all I need on the plane. Most of the time I'm sleeping so I've got my book to read if I'm awake, my music to listen to, um, my water, my, my phone, and I'm not dealing with all that other stuff. There's two extra things in this pattern that to me are worth the price of the pattern, whether or not you make the jet set. So one is a little handle grip, which lets you put this on your handle or hook it to something else. This is super simple and easy to make. It's just made out of a couple layers of soft and stable with fabric. If you do a lot of shopping and you're carrying grocery bags, this is really nice to hook through the handles of those and make them easier to carry. And then the even better thing on here is these little bag tags. So these are awesome because you can open them up, you can stick your ID inside here, and then close this, and not everybody in the world is seeing your name and address. So these are easy to hook on your suitcases. If you're taking a family trip somewhere, you can make everybody matching bag tags so they it's easy to spot your luggage when it comes off because everybody in the world has a black suitcase. And so I use these to make it easy to spot my bag as it comes off the luggage carousel. 
So fun to do. You can add embroidery on here. So many fun things you can do with it. I've heard of people who make these for kids who are in band to label their band instruments, people who go camping and label the different things that they're using. So lots and lots of ways to use this, even if you don't make this. So that pattern, again, is called Jet Set 2 and a really fun one for travel. All right. I think we've gone through everything but our laptop bags. And there are three patterns that have, that are designed for carrying laptops. And I've put laptops in them so that you can kind of get an idea of size. So netbook computer carriers is the smallest. Laptop computer carriers is the medium size, which is for like a regular size laptop. And then we have executive carryalls, which is designed for your widescreen laptops. This pattern does not have an add-on video, but one of we've been doing sewing classes here at Biani for our staff, and we've had them work through the Biani basics. And once they get done with that, they can pick a pattern and make something. And I was asking some of the people the other day, what are you going to make next? And one of them said, I really want to make a laptop bag to carry my laptop in. And I said, so easy. Basically, a laptop bag is an easy does it with handles and pockets on it. So you know everything you need to know. You can do this. So let me describe the differences. I think we'll start with the small one. So each of these patterns has two styles of bag in it. And the small one is a little bit smaller than the big one so that if you wanted extra padding, you could put it inside. So the little one in each case is really quick and simple to make. It's a front, a back, a side with a zipper, and a zippered pocket in the front. And then I believe we may have added, yes, and then we added a full height mesh pocket on the back. So super easy to carry an iPad. This would be a great size for an iPad or a tablet. And the, the handles have soft and stable in them, so they're soft to carry. The larger one, which is not a lot larger, but a little bit larger, has a lot more bells and whistles. So this one has the padded handles. It also has an adjustable detachable carrying strap with a pad, a strap on the back so you can hook it over the handles on your rolling luggage a slip pocket on back, a zippered pocket on front, and then the same full height mesh pocket on the inside. So this is called uh, Netbook Computer Carriers. This fabric is a great new fabric from Island Batik. It was designed by Jackie Kunkel of Canton Village Quilt Works, and it's called, did I say the name? It's called Blinded by Science. And so it's got all kinds of scientific um, symbols and things on it but we loved the colors and and whenever we get a line of fabric where we can have six different good main fabrics we love using that because then we can make a model of each one you might also notice that on here what we did is we quilted the turquoise fabric to the fuchsia fabric and we used the turquoise side out for the small bag and we used the fuchsia side out for the large bag. So you only have to quilt one piece and you get double duty out of it. So I kind of have a feeling that's what we did on all of the bags in these sets. So this again is netbook computer carriers too and great for an iPad or a tablet. This is laptop computer carriers and again two sizes. The small one in this case is exactly like the other, just simple and easy to do. The large one on this has handles that attach on the side rather than front and back. That was too narrow to do that. And this one has a slip pocket and a zippered pocket in front, slip pocket in back, tra or, um, strap for your luggage, and then inside and this is my laptop that goes back and forth it from home. So you can see how much room there is beyond my laptop for this bag. So this is a great size for carrying paperwork back and forth to the office. Uh, your folders fit in here, a binder would fit in here, a really nice size to make. And inside is a full height quilted pocket on the back. So usually when I'm traveling, my laptop goes in that pocket, and then I've got the whole inside available for other things. 
and then on the other side is a slip pocket that's made out of fabric that's divided into three sections. And the sections on that are determined by when you sew the handles down. So um, pretty much cast in stone, those pockets. So that's laptop computer carriers and my regular laptop fits really easily in there. And then executive carry-alls is one that we designed because so many people said, I have a widescreen laptop. So the computer that I put in here, I actually put it in the small case so that you can see it fits in either one. And this is a, I think Jake says this is like an 18 inch laptop. Yeah, it's heavy. So this fits in there, this is an HP. I know my friend Leslie made one of these to carry her light box in. And Leslie, if you're on there, give us a comment and tell us. I'm pretty sure you made the executive carry-all and the only change you had to make was make this a little bit deeper. But if you can clarify that, that'd be great. So again, a small one with quick and easy to make. And then the bigger one is exactly like the laptop bag, just sized bigger and um, that fits really nice with your your larger laptop so i think this fabric is so pretty I like the dna swirls on one side so fun and fun to do thank you island batik for providing this beautiful fabric for us um, we really enjoyed sewing with it all right so that's a sample of all 11 of those patterns what we're going to do for our giveaway today We've got all 11 patterns, and so we're going to pick 11 winners and send each one a pattern. So comment about something that you learned. If you have a preference for which pattern you want, you can include that in your comment. We're not going to make any guarantees, but uh, we'll do our best to send you what you want. And so uh, leave us a comment for that. Before I go, I wanted to give you an update on our local quilt shop contest. We have been absolutely blown away by the response to this, and I'm sure your local quilt shops are blown away too. Since last week, we've had over 6,000 new votes. And today there are nearly 10,000 votes for nearly 1,100 stores. So thank you for sharing the love. I know your stores are going to really appreciate it when we send them the comments that you've made, and they're going to love hearing what you have to say. Currently, our second through fifth place stores have a total of 1,529 votes. In the 2020 contest, those same four stores received a total of 144 votes. So that's almost 10 times what they got last year. So they're doing a good job of getting the word out. We hope we're doing a good job of do getting the word out and you're doing a great job of voting. So thank you so much. There's great prizes in this and also just great good feelings to share. So thank you for showing the love and helping us make this a really strong contest. If you want to see how your shop is doing, we created a leaderboard that shows, you know, where the stores are in the race. And Trevor's going to link to that in the comments so you can check it out. We did get a question from one store earlier this week because we mentioned last week you can only vote once and we will we have a program to eliminate duplicate votes. We will not do that until the very end. So the numbers, that's why we say about this many votes. So the numbers may change. Um, we just can't keep up with that every day throughout. So we'll do that at the end, but um, make sure that you're, you're getting those votes in for those stores. Last week, we recognized three stores, um, Quilt Passion in Sweden, the Old Country Store in Pennsylvania, who's a perennial winner, and Tiny Stitches in Marietta, Georgia. We shared some comments that customers had made about those, and to show our appreciation to the stores, we sent each one of them some of our mesh sample packs that we talked about last week. This week, we want to highlight a few other stellar stores that received some wonderful comments. And we're going to send each of these stores a bundle of all 12 of the patterns from today's show. Again, if you wanna see any of those models in person, make sure you let the store know to borrow a trunk show. We've got plenty of models of all of these and we'd love to get them out working.
So the three stores that we want to recognize today, the first one is Quilter Roos from Ruston, Louisiana. Last year, Quilter Roos took second place and they were one of only two stores to ever exceed a thousand votes in the local quilt shop contest. And their voters always have such nice things to say about them. We thought you'd love to hear one customer's story. So she said, the day the store's cell phone went missing was a hoot. Rhonda and Melissa had misplaced the phone, boy, I can relate to that, and offered a discount to whoever found it. My friend and I rummaged through the bolts looking for it. Even though we didn't found it, we found lots of goodies for ourselves. I think that's brilliant. I wonder if that store lost that phone on purpose. I might be tempted to do that again. Uh, but what a great story. I hope they found the phone. All right, the next store we want to talk about is the So Inspired Quilt Shop and Studio in Simsbury, Connecticut. And we know the East Coast and the Northeast is really getting hit with some snowstorms right now, and things are probably pretty dreary. So we thought that this experience from Beth might warm your hearts. Beth says, a couple of years ago, I was having trouble making dinner napkins with well-made and elegant edges. Linda was so helpful and kind. When I couldn't understand how to get them done, she sat down at their machine and showed me the process on a scrap of fabric. She repeated the process and made sure I could explain it to her afterwards. That is a great teacher. She also says, Lindian, Linda, Vivian, Debbie, Gina, and Marianne have guided me through the last 13 years. Without their loving help, I would be lost. This shop embodies all the fine qualities essential for success. And I couldn't agree more. Having that customer service and teaching people about everything is so important. All right. And she also said they really made her feel like part of the family. And speaking of making you feel like part of the family, um, that you get when you go into your local sh quilt shop. We thought we'd highlight, highlight, oh boy, highlight these stories from Quilters Crossing in Tumball, Texas. Tumball, Texas? One person said, each time I go into the shop is special. They always make me laugh and feel at home. Another said, they are so friendly to newcomers and share their knowledge freely. Another said, one day I went into the shop and saw my beautiful friend, Tanya, who was the matron of honor at my wedding 28 years ago. I learned that she works at Quilters Crossing one day a week. Now I try to make sure to go in on that special day of the week. I can tell you, going into the quilt shop and finding friends and the staff that's there that become friends is so important to all of us. And if your store's not open, I'm sure you're missing that as much as, as the rest of us. So let's keep uh, letting them know what we appreciate about them, supporting them so that when they're ready to open again, uh, they're in strong shape. And thank you again for participating in our weekly Facebook Live and in our local quilt shop contest. So get your votes in and send us some comments. Uh, we're looking forward to sending these patterns out to some of you, and we'll look forward to seeing you again next week. Thanks so much for joining us.